Okay, welcome to DE's Business Class Masterclass, uh, sorry, Business Catalyst Masterclass. And today we're talking customer relationship management tools. It doesn't sound very sexy, but at the end of the day, it's such an important part of a business to have what's known as a CRM. Let's just go over some of the topics. First of all, Erin, you're in the house, we all know that. But if you have any questions, Erin mans the chat room. So you can quickly type in, uh, I guess, a question in the chat room, or you can raise your hand. So those that have raised the hand to say, hey, yep, you could hear me. I'll move this over here so I'm facing you. That might be a bit nicer. You can always just raise your hand and uh, Erin will sort of bring you into the room. That way then we get you uh, your voice, and it's kind of nice uh, for us as presenters not to speak for the full one hour, although those that know me know I can speak underwater for an hour. But at the end of the day, I would prefer if you raised your hand and asked a quick question. And we do have a QA and a at the end, so I normally turn off the recording, uh, and that way then we can just have a one-to-one -one on something a little bit more specific. So if you wanted to hold off your question until the end, and we can deep dive into it, but if you feel like it's important and you'd like to know the answer throughout the presentation, please do. So what will you learn? Today you'll learn a little bit about Business Catalyst. You'll talk, um, well I'll talk about what a CRM is and what are the benefits. Once we know what a CRM is, we'll then add a customer to it. We'll have a look at orders, cases, and bookings. What are they? And after that, we'll talk about opportunities and sales. We'll talk about extending the CRM. If it doesn't actually do what you need it to do, how do you, you know, extend it to, 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 I guess, allow it to do more things? Searching, retrieving, finding people. And we'll talk about subscriptions as well and how that all ties into the Business Catalyst CRM. We've got help and support. And at the end, we've got Tim's tips. So you've all been enjoying those. So I've been asking, you know, uh, you've been asking me to, to bring them in each week. So I'll, uh, I'll do that again today. Uh, one thing to note uh, very, very early in the piece is that we're dealing with Business Catalyst. Okay, so Business Catalyst is an easy to update, all-in-one solution that grows with your business. So it's an online tool that we use here at DE to build online solutions for our customers. So most of you in the room have either got a business catalyst solution or you're getting us to build you one and you wanna learn more. So in one respect, uh, you've kind of got a piece of software and you wanna drive it harder. Now, a lot of the things that I show in particular today can be applied to other CRMs. Business Catalyst actually has a CRM built in it, but you can use a lot of the techniques that I'm going to show you today in other CRMs. The good thing about BC, Business Catalyst, is it's updated by Adobe, and so we have this kind of parent body looking over DE and looking over you. And it's hosted in uh, secure data centers across the globe. So it's a cloud-based solution and doesn't require you to install anything on your own computers. So I thought we'd get into the theory behind a CRM and exactly what is it. So a CRM is known as a customer relationship management tool. Okay, so it's really just a piece of software that's available to you. Now, in one respect, it's a centralized repository of all your customer information, their name, their address, when they purchase off you last, what their date of birth is, uh, uh, what events they've attended. So it's a centralized sort of information source. It can be cloud-based, meaning it can be on a server up in the internet, or you can actually have them locally, meaning they can be loaded onto your computer. I mean, years ago, I built a CRM using Access, which is a Microsoft program. So you can have an Access database that can be used for your CRM. Now you can get customized CRMs. What I mean by that is you can employ an IT company, a programmer, you know, uh, to build a CRM for you, almost from ground up. They might have a bit of a framework initially to start with, but then they'll customize the CRM to suit your purposes. 
but you can also get off the shelf CRM. So Business Catalyst is an off the shelf CRM. It's kind of already half built and it's ready for you to use. You can customize it a little bit, but not, not necessarily. It's kind of like this is what it is and this is what it can do. Um, whereas a customized one, you can get in there and, and change things either yourself or you employ an IT company to do it. There's a lot of subscription based CRMs around at the moment. Um, so Business Catalyst is in one respect a subscription based CRM. You pay for your hosting and that gives you access in to edit your website. But part of being able to edit your website is a button called the CRM. So you're kind of subscribing to Adobe Business Catalyst. There's lots out on the internet. It's very hard for me to generalize how to use CRMs because they've all got their own little interface and got their own, I guess, ways. So that's why I'm gonna deep dive today into BC. So what are the benefits? So first of all, the benefits are improved efficiency. So in a business organization, having everything in the one spot and being able to manage that is really efficient. So anyone can pick up a piece of, um, uh, sorry, uh, information about a customer and you can, leave, you can leave where that person left off in one respect. It becomes an asset to the business, okay? So having all the information in one location, that's worth something. You know, if you're trying to sell your business, having a really up-to-date CRM is an asset to your business. And that gives you the ability to, you know, say, well, you know, this, this is where the heart is. This is all our customer information. This is, the, this is how we're currently working with them and who's our number one clients and all that sort of thing. It improves your customer service. So when your receptionist or yourself picks up the phone, they're kind of not asking for basic details or they kind of say, hey John, um, great to speak to you again. Um, I can see that your account manager is Tony. Would you like me to put you through to Tony? Um, it just allows you to provide better customer service, knowing when they last purchased a car off you, uh, knowing when their birthday is, knowing if they're attending an event or how often they purchase. It just gives you greater insight into being able to work with them. Now they can be customized or off the shelf. Whether that's a benefit or not, I'm not too sure there, but really, to be honest, you know, the benefit there is you, you don't have to spend a, an awful amount of money to get CRMs these days because there's a lot of subscription-based models that will certainly serve your purpose, and hence why I'm going to show you BC today. They're great for report generation. So if a management wants a report on, hey, I'd like to know all of our customers, how many have we got? Um, I'd like to know our top 10 customers. Um, I would like to know all the accounts that Tony manages. Uh, it, it really, it gives you flexibility to produce customized reports. And very good for succession planning. So if staff members or committee members leave and come and go, it's a great way to hand that knowledge over so it doesn't go in the Excel spreadsheet with the employer on their laptop. It stays within the business. It's an asset and it's great for succession planning. So I've got a little bit of a poll there, um, Erin. I'll get you to put it up on the screen if that's okay. I'll get you to choose, um, there's two of them. Um, so we might actually fire both off. So we'll do one and then we'll do two, please. Sorry, so I've just popped up the first one there says, um, that says who has a CRM in place. So just waiting for some of the results to come through now. Most people have voted, and I'll close that one off in just a moment. Are we improving efficiencies? Are we servicing our customers better? Building a company asset? Using it for succession planning or using it for prospecting or nurturing leads? So here is timgentle.com, and as you know, those that have been in the webinars to date will know that it's been built on Business Catalyst. So to log into BC, we just put a slash admin and then we are, um, I guess, asked to log in and I am now logged in. So welcome to the dashboard. Um, some of you are familiar with this, some of you are not. This is the dashboard of the Business Catalyst uh, software. And today we're bypassing most of these because we're talking to, about the CRM, Customer Relationship Management Tool. So some of you may not have, when you log in to your Business Catalyst system, you may not even have this tab. 
In fact, you might just have Site Manager reports and site settings, and so you'll need to upgrade to have a CRM, and then you upgrade again to have e-commerce. I've got the full suite. I'm on the top level plan, and hence why I've got all of these tabs running down the left. All right, so let's jump into the CRM now. I'm clicking on that tab, and I'll run down in particular, I'll run down in the order, I think it's better, rather than sort of jump all over the place. So the first thing I'm going to do is give you an indication of searching. So the database can be populated in many ways. And what I mean by that, and let's call it a database, your customers can be added either via filling out a form on your website, or you can add them manually, or you can import them using an Excel spreadsheet. Now I'll be getting onto that in a minute, but I'll just click on search and I can bring up a customer. For example, if I type in Smith, it brings up all of the people that are related or have got the name Smith. You can see here that they've got a unique ID. I'll just scroll in a bit so you can see that. And so each have a what's called a, um, a primary key. And that means that that uniquely identifies that customer in the system. Now I'll choose John Smith. And now we're going into John Smith's, I guess, uh, record in one respect. So very simple. You can search on name. You can search on orders. And you can insert on cases. I'll explain what a case and an order is in a minute. But let's jump into G um, John Smith. The other thing I'll do for those power users in the room up here in recent items, you'll see when I roll over the top, it remembers the person that I was in last. So I can click on recent items and drop straight into John Smith. So here I am. I've got John who's been entered into my uh, system and he could have been self, he could have entered himself via a form or I could enter him. Let's role play entering him by myself. So I'm gonna click on customers and then I'm going to click on add, add contact. So if I wanted to, I could have just literally added John in here. So I'll add a new person, John Brown. And of course I can give him a name and an email, johnbrown.com.au. So you can definitely enter your own people in, or if they enter via the website, they're automatically added to the CRM. Let me explain. I'm going to go back to the dashboard. I'm scrolling down now, and we can see here on the 18th of Feb, Ross Jardine has submitted an inquiry form. So on the Contact Us page, if I go here, and I go to the Contact Us page on the website, I can enter Pat Gentle and uh, Pat at gentle.com.au, her number. And what I'm doing here is I'm just pretending I'm a client or a prospect coming onto the website. So I'm just filling out the form. Um, Hi Tim, great webinar. A little early for that, but hopefully it'll be a good one. And then I just enter in this uh, little bit of spam blocking to stop uh, the bots filling out our form and being added to our database, which is a bit annoying. That should work. Submit. So it says, thank you for your submission. Now let's jump in behind the scenes again into back of BC. I'm gonna click refresh now and have a little look here. We can see that on the 25th of Feb, Pat Gentle submitted an inquiry. So Pat has been added to the website, has been added to the CRM. Let me click on it. So that's a good thing. I quite like that. You know, we can come in here and we can see that we've got Pat's phone number. We've got his uh, name. And if we want to, we can come in and have a look at his activity. So that's the power of BC in having a CRM associated with your website. Because anyone who fills out a form 
subscribes to your newsletter, comments on your page, buys a product from your store, anytime they kind of click a submit button, they get added to the CRM. And from that point onwards, you can work with them. So let's have a look at Pat's activity. First of all, we know that Pat, the first thing he's done is he submitted an inquiry form about a minute ago. Now this actually creates what's known as a case. So anytime someone submits something, it's, it, it, it triggers off a case. So I'll click on um, cases and I can see here that he has one case. I can go back and review that, so I'll click on contact us now. I can scroll down and I can actually see what was in the form. Hi Tim, great webinar. So I quite like that. The idea that you can have a form on your website, it populates your CRM, it has a backup of the form, you'll also be emailed the form, but it, it, it's, it's basically a sign to this person for as long as they use, um, in one respect, their email address. Because yes, this has a unique identification up here, but if you really want to know from a technical point of view, it's related to the website. So before I continue, has anyone got any questions or would anyone like to jump in and ask anything about what I've just shown so far, please? Just so I want to make sure everyone's on par and they understand. We've got a few hands raised in the room there, so if you could facilitate that one, please. Let's have a little look here. All right. Uh, Rodney, um, you'll need a microphone if you wanted to, um, to jump in. It looks like you haven't got a microphone or you might want to put your hand down, that's all. You might not have known it was up, so just letting you know. Yeah, we'll need some sort of microphone to bring Rodney in. Yeah, that's it. What you're doing right now is perfect. I'll bring you into the room. There you go. There you go. Sorry, yeah, sorry. What are, what are the audio? audio. Yeah, go ahead, Rod. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. What are you? 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 Um, um, just I know someone's coming back. They tell me they didn't have a business name, 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 name. Put that, put that on cross. Is that in? Is that in? Is it money? Is it money? Is it coming? Is it coming? Is it that? Yeah. So all you would have to do is just come in and just yeah. So all you would have to do is in the web form that you have on your website, you would choose the information that you want to populate into the CRM. I don't believe my web form asks for a company name. Yep, okay, okay. But you're right. Um, the company that Pat would work for, just so you know, it's actually located up here in relationships. Okay. So Pat has a relationship with a company or another or another person in the CRM. That's how the the company uh, is uh, you're going into it. So the relationship would be the company. Yeah, okay, okay. Hey, thanks for your question. Great question too. So just to uh, reinforce where um, what Rob was asking is, you know, whereabouts is some other information that I want to have appear in the CRM. It depends on the form that you have. All right, let's work our way across the top here. But I think it's better that we work with someone in another website that's a little bit more active. So I'm going to take you behind the scenes now of another website. So we're, jump, we're jumping out of timgentle.com and I'm going to be jumping into the back of BC, um, over in the back of Design Experts. So I'm going to have a look at Matt. So here we are. We've got Matt, we've got Matt Visser. And what, the reason I brought this up is because we want to have a look at the cases. So we can see here that on the 18th of February and on the 2nd of September, Matt has had two cases. In fact, they were orders. And if I click on the orders, I can see here that he's paid, he's paid a bill via Design Experts website. So we can have a look at the orders. Now, if Matt had attended some events, we could have a little look here at all the events that Matt is attending. If Matt was subscribed to a newsletter that we were using, for example, if I wanted to subscribe him to the B2B list, 
I could then subscribe him to the email marketing campaign list. If I wanted to give Matt access into the secure zone, meaning a password restricted area of my website, I could then go in here and give him access into the secure zone, the behind the scenes things that he needs a login to be able to go. I can come further down and I can actually say that this guy in terms of an online sort of environment, in terms of an online store, is a wholesaler. So when he logs in, he sees wholesale prices. And I can take it one more step further and I can give Matt 10% discount off a particular catalog range that I might have in my store. So if Matt's a VIP customer, when he goes to the checkout, he'll get 10% off website hosting if I wanted to take it down that path. So the great thing about having all these available to us is that we can go in and we can manage Matt, we can service him better. So we can have a look at his orders. But let's talk about working as a team. Let's have a look at this case. I'm going to jump back to Pat Gentle now. The case, the case that Pat submitted was a contact form. I'm clicking on the contact form now. What I want to do is I want to, I guess, uh, edit this. I want to work with this. At the moment, it's sitting there and it needs things to be done. So let's go through some of the things that we can do with this case. First of all, understand that you must have a person and a case is associated with a person. You can come in here and you can edit. And from this point onwards, you can do many things. I'm going to work my way down logically to identify them. First of all, you can give it a status. So you can say that this is open, it's escalated, and you can give your own statuses. So for example, if you're dealing with lead generation or if someone makes an inquiry on your website, what you could do is you could then say um, responded or assigned, or whatever you want. You can create these statuses. So I'll just say escalated. Now I'm going to assign it to someone different in the business. So you may have all your different names in here of all your different staff. I'm just going to assign this one to uh, Tim Gentle, to myself. Now I can say something like this. Um, uh, uh, what's the guy's name? Pat. Um, Pat attended one of Tim's webinars and is interested in a CRM. Now, um, in terms of your question, Rodney, if you happen to know where Pat was working, you could assign him uh, to a company at this point. I won't do that, but that's where that could come into play. Now you can trigger what's known as a workflow. Now a workflow, what happens with that, it can trigger off many steps. For example, it could email the customer back to say, hey, thanks for your inquiry, we've received notification, we've assigned you um, to Tim and he'll contact you within, a, uh, within 24 hours. So even though they might get an autoresponder from the website, you can also come in here and trigger off a workflow. Now a workflow can be internal or external. So a workflow can notify the customer, hey, we look forward to working with you, but it can also trigger a workflow to say, hey Tim, you've had a new inquiry assigned to you, please give Pat a call. And that's what that means, a workflow. Now in here, this is relating to the case. Um, so you could put a little new message in here relating to the case itself. So if I wanted to, I could write to Pat. Hi Pat, um, thanks for letting, uh, thanks for contacting us. Just a little note uh, that we've assigned uh, your uh, case, your opportunity, your um, uh, your inquiry to Tim, etc., etc. So this one here, if I click send message, which I will, 
hopefully there's no pat at gentle.com. But when I send that, that sends it from the system. It sends it from Tim Gentle, but it's all located in the one spot. So you don't have to go outside into Outlook or go back into your email to send it to Pat. This has automatically sent an email and it's been, I guess, uh, archived in the solution. Now you can come in here and you can upload files. So in relation to this case, I'm not sure what it could be, but let's relate it to a job application. Someone's applied for a job and uh, as a result, you need to upload their driver's license, uh, their, um, uh, their birth certificate and maybe potentially their, their uh, VCE or their college uh, certificate. So you can upload various documents here. And in fact, in the form, you could ask them to upload them and they would automatically appear here. So please um, upload your driver's license and that would relate and appear here. Um, workflows, you can just, again, it's just another quick way. That it's very similar to up here, but inside here you can trigger different workflows to happen internally or externally. Uh, miscellaneous. Oh, that's no, I don't. That's probably just a little bit of a date date archive, but this one here I really like. New task, new call, or new meeting. So what you can do is, if you want to, you've received a notification. This is a new hot lead. You can set up a new meeting or a new call. But why don't we do a new call? Call subject. You need to qualify this lead. So. When do you want to do that? Well, we'll give them a call tomorrow. Um, what time do you want to call them? Well, let's give them a call at 10 o'clock. It's planned. Now, you also want to send a reminder. So send a reminder tomorrow at 9 o'clock. And then, who do you want to assign it to? Well, let's assign it to Tim. Hi, Tim. Just a reminder to call uh, Pat at 10 a.m. Thanks, Jenny. And so Jenny in the office is the person at DE who takes the initial call. She sort of sets up the reminders and then suddenly tomorrow morning as I'm working away, uh, this will come through as an email reminder at nine o'clock. I believe also it can pop up, uh, I think, uh, but I might be wrong there. Either way, it comes through as an email tomorrow morning into my inbox. So if I click save, that way then, that's a task that's been assigned. And uh, if you come into here under tasks, you can see here it's been set. Is there any questions in relation to what I just showed you? I kind of went through each of the different topics and really just gave you an understanding of some of the power that you can do with that. Have we had any, uh, we've got a few hands raised here. so. What we might do, have we had any questions too in the chat room that you feel free to bring in there, Erin? Um, there's nothing in there at the moment. At the moment. I think most people, people are, are, um, are still on the same, same page, page with you, page with you and, 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 and are getting a lot out of it. I will just bring everybody's hand up. Hand up. Go ahead, Ruby. Is that me? Was that me? Was that... Yeah, to you, Ruby. No, it doesn't. Do that or not? I've, had, I know. I've had a few people ask me that over the years. Uh, no, what it can do, just to let you know, is it can send a text message to Tim to call Pat. Okay, okay. But it can't just send it to Tim. If I had through the text message, phone will be at me. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, no, it'll do that. So when you set up a workflow notification, if you have a look here, if I go into workflows and do a uh, quick add, uh, I was hoping it would be there, manage notifications. In your workflow notification, I'll just come over here and go site settings and go manage workflows. What you need to do is you need to set that up. So, for example, you could initiate a workflow and let's call this one a new lead. Now, with the new lead, you have to add a step. And 
the step will be send SMS. Okay. Now you want to choose who you want to send it to. So you'll send it to either the sales reps or you can have a particular person. Let's just send it to all administrators. And the notification will be SMS. All right. So this will send off an SMS to administrators to let them know that a new inquiry has come in. And then you can then, uh, I'm not sure whether or not it gives you the link, but let's hope that it gives you the link that then brings you back into the system for you to read more about the new inquiry. It's just a matter of you're not in front of your computer all day and it's a great way to notify your salespeople out on the road. So that will probably hit the mark really, really well for you if that's kind of what you wanted it to do. All right, I'm jumping back to the CRM now. I'll go back and I want to talk about the big thing I get asked a lot is, hey, Tim, I have a customer database. Can I get my customers into here? Yes, you can. And the great thing about the solution is that you can import contacts. You can see up here, import contacts, and there's import contacts advanced. Look, I'm going to import contacts advanced. So look, just follow me. I'm now going to be downloading the template. Can you see here how it says download import template? I'm going to be clicking on that. What this is, everybody, is an Excel spreadsheet. An Excel spreadsheet allows you to put customer information in and then you can import them into the, spread, uh, into the system. So if we have a look up here, I'll zoom in so you can see it. You can see it a bit better. Uh, view, where's view, zoom, 200. There we go. I'll just get rid of this because it's a bit distracting. Delete. Okay, so here we are. It's asking for the ID, the email, and so forth. So what I'll do is purely for the demonstration, you can see one's already here, so I might as well use it. Mr. John Citizen. Um, he's from Sony. Um, why don't we say that it, um, he lives in Bendigo. Um, he's from Victoria and the postcode is 3550 uh, AU. I can come along here though and some of the other things I like, let's have a look at some of the more detailed and what do they mean. I can definitely put a date of birth in, okay? But these four categories, I want to show you the power of what they are. So what sort of customer is this? Well, he's a supplier. Where did he come from? Well, I'm going to say he came from an expo. What industry is he in? Well, he's in music. And what's his rating? So, you know, how? what's the potential that I can work with him on? All right. So note supplier, expo, music, and height. Just please remember those. What I'm going to be doing now is I could have 100, 200. In fact, I've worked with clients with over 8,000 records. So it's really, really important to realize that, uh, you know, BC can handle as many as you want. But I'm going to take this Excel spreadsheet now and I'm going to populate BC. I come up in here and go File, Save As. Now, in the web world or in computer world, we need to save it as a CSV. Just note that it needs to be saved as a CSV. It's in Excel at the moment but I need to export it. Now I'm going to call this one um, BC Masterclass Import Demo. I always like to put a date, all right? So I like to go um, whatever today is, 25.02.15. I'm going to save it to my desktop so I can access it easy. Save. Now I'm going to go back into the website and this time I'm going to import. So here I'm going to import a comma delimited. The first row, if you remember, was data headings. And I want to add and update the details. Here are all the, I guess, columns. Now some of you may have more advanced forms. And some of our clients here, you know, you, you can import a lot more than what the initial spreadsheet uh, gives you. So you might have uh, different columns that you might want to import. An example of one is um, what colour do they like? Uh, and it could be orange or blue or pink. So I'm going to come down here 
and I could do this at the same time. I can subscribe them to an email marketing list. So if I wanted to import all of these customers that I met at an expo last week, I could subscribe them to my expo mailing list. If I wanted to um, provide them secure access into my member only part, I could. I could make them uh, access my member only area. So what I'm doing is I'm importing a spreadsheet, but I'm really setting up an email marketing list and also giving a lot of people access to my secure zone. I'm going to click next and I'm going to allow BC to suck up the spreadsheet and to give me a bit of a look. Oh, please select file to import. That's pretty much the most important step I missed. <laughs> Choose file. It's on my desktop and here it is. Don't forget that everybody. My apologies. You need to select the file first. Scroll down the bottom and click next. Have I downloaded the template? Yes, I have. Have I read the instructions? Yes, I have. So what this has done is it's imported and it gives you a bit of a preview. Okay, so we remember John. If we scroll along, we can have a look. Oh, yeah, it's remembered that. Yeah, okay, good. And then we click on import. So this adds those two customers into our CRM. Let's go and find them now. Search. So if I search on maybe Sony, I doubt it. Oh, Sony Inc. Interesting. I might just do a search on, what was he? Citizen, wasn't it? John Citizen. There he is. So John Citizen is now in the CRM. And there's all the details. So what a great way to populate the CRM and hit the ground running by using an Excel spreadsheet. Get your staff to put all their information in the one spreadsheet. Just make sure you're using the template that's been provided to you in BC because you need to have the same columns. So quite often you need to sort of, uh, you know, either send around the spreadsheet and get everyone to enter their information in or you need to cut and paste and make sure it's all in the nice columns. But I want to go down into, is it additional info? Where well, I'm just trying to find it. There it is. So customer type equals supplier, lead source equals expo, industry equals music and rating equals hot. So what can we do with this information? Well, first of all, just to note, if you have existing customers in here, you can click edit. And what you can do is reassign them. So if you have them in there and you haven't really given them a customer type, you can come and assign them. So let's just pretend John isn't a supplier. Let's pretend he's um, a partner. So what I'm doing is I'm assigning him. Where did I meet him? Um, well, I met him at a trade show. What industry is he from? Well, he's from um, business services. Now, just say, for example, the industries or the customer type that you want to deal with is not in the default list. Very, very easy stuff. Let me show you. I'm going to use the customer type as an example. This box right here allows you to customize the customer type. I'm going to click it now and you can see here that it's showing that list. I don't need analyst, so I'm going to delete that. I don't need competitor. I'm going to delete that. So that's one way you can do it. You can delete what's there. You can also add new. So what is this customer? Uh, sorry, what is this person? I'm going to make him a referral partner. Save. And so what I've done here is I've added another one to the list. Let's view the list. There it is. I'm going to close that now. And when I come back into here, I'm going to make John a referral partner. So by all means, go through and clean these up. Make sure that all the industries, all the lead source, that means where you found them and where they met you, what customer type they are. And if you want to use the CRM to its full advantage, segmenting your customers is going to be very powerful because I'm going to show you what you do once you've got these segments. Save and finish. Okay, I'm just going to get one other person. Um, I forget what the other people's names were. Fiona. Okay, Fiona. Cool. I'm going to make Fiona a referral partner too.
Done. So I've made her a referral partner. So we've got John and Fiona as a referral partner. It would be worth noting um, while I'm here is if you did subscribe them to our newsletter, this will be ticked. You can see here that I imported Fiona and it's already been ticked. I don't know if you remember, but during the import I said, please subscribe these people to the campaign list known as Expo. And if you remember, I also said, please subscribe these people to the member only area of my website. That's the password restricted area that I don't want people uh, to be uh, to, to, to have access to unless they've got a password to get in. Well, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be creating a report. So I'm coming over here into reports and I'm going to create a custom report. I'm going to choose add customer report. And I just want a report that lists my contacts only. Next. I would like to know the first name, the last name, the industry, maybe the company. I would like to know the email and the mobile. Next. But I only want a list of my customers um, that have a customer type equals referral partner. Generate report. So this should pull out Fiona and John. And so what this has done is it's pulled out of the CRM the two customers that are referral partners. It's given me the information that I need. I mustn't have imported the phone number. But what I can do is quite a few things. First thing is how powerful is that? I can quickly go in and view uh, John and I can work with John. But I can export these customers as, as an Excel spreadsheet or as a CSV file or as a PDF. I can also add the customers to a campaign list. So even though we added these people to an email marketing newsletter list, I can sort of run a new report and say list all the people that blah 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 and create a new mailing list. I can add them to a secure zone or affiliate program. I don't really use this one too much so I'm not too familiar with that one but either way you, you kind of understand where I'm going. So I want to add them to the member only area. So once you've generated the list, you can do these things. But the other thing you can do is you can click Next and you can save the report. So I'm going to call this one Referral Partners. Save. What this has done is it's remembered all the criteria that I just set up. So let's go back into Custom Reports. And you can see here now that this report is ready to go. So next time I don't have to go through and do all that filtering. I can just click on referral partners, bang, and that will bring up that list. So that's the advantage of working with your customers and populating the cells that are in there to populate. So by segmenting them, it allows you to better pull them out and to deal with them. So all of your suppliers, all of your Queensland, all of the people that are serviced by blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to go back into John Citizen again. Now I'm going to dig in a deep. I'm going to dig in a bit deeper, unless anyone has got any quick questions relating to that. All right, here I go. All right, Mr. John Citizen. Mr. John Citizen. Hello. Now up here. I can have a look at the campaigns that John has received. So if he was part of the email marketing solution, I would be able to see here a full list of all of the email marketing newsletters that he has been sent. And then I can see what he clicked on. So when you send out an email marketing newsletter using Business Catalyst, you'll be able to see that John Citizen opened up the February newsletter. And John, he actually clicked on the, um, 
uh, the the farm expo day and you know and, and you could see that he was interested in in the farm expo day so you can track John's behavior in newsletters the next thing that you can do is you can create three things I'm going to focus mainly on the anniversary dates but if you wanted to you could create an opportunity so if you've got John in the background you could come into here and create a new opportunity and you could call this one um, um, sell his home so the new opportunity is that you have the opportunity to sell his home what type of business is it it's, he's um, an existing client what stage is it at well it needs analysis you need to go visit him what's the probability of winning it um, 80% what's the amount well you might get a 4% commission rate I don't know so $10,000 when do you think you may actually get his listing well you might get it say March the 11th and what are the details um, I, um, I met uh, John at a function last week and he mentioned that um, he had a new property he wanted to market etc and so what I'm doing here is adding a new opportunity save and finish so not too sure why I couldn't save the details maybe I typed it a bit long but either way that's been assigned to John the other thing I like is that you can apply anniversary dates very powerful if you get to this level only a few of our clients actually dig in this deep so if it's not yours I totally get it but some of you may go wow that would really work for example you may see a customer every year once a year once a month um, they might get their car serviced and there's quite a lot of businesses in the room and the variety is quite a lot I'm going to use um, car service will be fine so with a car maybe every 12 months it gets serviced so here I'm going to set that he had a car serviced today so the anniversary date is the 25th well you could set it next year if you wanted to um, but I like to use today I'll show you why in a minute another anniversary now let's just use the one you can set five anniversary dates for a particular client save now where the real power comes in this is that you can trigger off email marketing based on an anniversary date let me demonstrate I'll go into email marketing here and I'm jumping out of the CRM and I'm role-playing the ability to create an email marketing campaign I'm covering this in greater detail in the upcoming webinar but have a look at this this relates to today this campaign is a customer event send it 14 days before anniversary date one send it at 7 in the morning send it from the service center who's it from oh, I guess just you know whatever service service center and then you go next I've got to verify the email address do I all right next oh, damn it I haven't verified this um, email address let me see if I've done this one in the back of another website hopefully that'll work I don't think I've done it no look this is a great part of the solution you have to actually um, approve this email to be used as on behalf of the company but look the next step everyone and I'll cover this in the next webinar is actually formulating that email so 14 days prior oh, actually no I did that wrong if we're going to use the anniversary date of today it needs to be after and I need to do it what is it 366 days in the year I've got to forget Aaron you might be to help me out but anyway 340 days so what this is saying is that 340 days from the anniversary date send out a reminder hey your car's due in two weeks so you can see where that's going so that's what I quite like you need to 
really go into the CRM, but once you populate the CRM with all this information, you can drive it a bit harder. So that's anniversary dates. Relationships are, I think you'll have a relationship with Sony. Let's check that out. Yeah. So you can see here that um, because we imported the company, we can see here uh, that uh, uh, John has a relationship with Sony. That's his employer. So you might have a company that might have many, uh, I guess, uh, staff. And so as a CRM, you have a company in the database. And over here, you can come into relationships and that'll show all the staff. So it kind of goes both ways. That's how that works. All right, noticing the time, we've got about five more minutes to go um, in terms of the, the, the formal stuff. Just in terms of ex um, the last point I wanted to make was uh, the extending the database. Um, so in here, you can add more information if you want to contain it in relation to your client. So if the CRM doesn't offer you enough fields, you can add your own custom fields and extend the database out to have more information. When you're filtering the database, just like I showed you before, there's a, another technique that you need to do. It's not that dissimilar to what I showed you before about filtering on customer type, but by all means, you can extend the database and add your own fields. So that brings us to the end of the CRM. Um, it's a wonderful um, off-the-shelf solution that Business Catalyst offers us. We have to sort of accept it for what it's worth. It's not a customized solution for your business. It's an off-the-shelf CRM that you can use to drive your business forward and potentially one day you may migrate from it. But it's a good way to get the knowledge into one spot and then after that if you need to export the information out and import it into another CRM, feel free. There's lots on the market and uh, you can take the data out of BC and you can import it into another CRM. Potentially a lot of the attachments, the, 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 um, the, the driver's license, uh, the notes, the emails, that kind of can't be just exported and imported into another thing. Uh, some CRMs do allow um, the sort of the attachments and the, the email threads to be moved from one to the other. Um, but you certainly with BC, you'll probably only be able to export just the customer data rather than just um, rather than all the history in one respect. All right, um, I'm going to jump back to my presentation now and just talk about BC training. At Design Experts, we do provide BC training. Um, we do have some great videos for you in our CCC Customer Care Centre. So if you haven't got access to that secure zone please speak to your account manager or drop us a line and we can add you to that. You're in a webinar, so that's fairly obvious, and we do one-on-one -on -one training as well. So you can um, have one-on-one -on -one time with either myself or one of our trainers and say, hey, Tim, yeah, I want to dig in deep. Uh, it's 150 for a one hour. We also have a, um, a secure zone that you can, sorry, uh, some videos you can access via Business Catalyst, and that's the link there if you needed it. You can always give us a call on 1300 85 25 82. Now we do offer support and help. That's different than training everyone. Support and help is where you know your website's broken, your email's not working, you want a new email, you've busted your site, um, something to do with that. So we encourage you to submit a support ticket. You can do that on Design Experts website or you can just email support at designexperts.com.au. You can give us a call on 1300 85 25 82. And, uh, and that's really it. So Tim's tip of the week. Now, this one's a little bit outside the square and I really want you to consider doing this. And some people probably you know, think, oh, it's a lot hard. But one of the things I'm going to recommend that you do from learning everything you've done today is on your website, I would consider adding a subscribe. Now it's a very simple thing. You don't have to call it subscribe. Please don't under, please understand what my tip today is using your website to populate your CRM. Now I'm going to click subscribe. 
Mine is very simple. I want them to subscribe to my newsletter. So Jill Brown, Jill at brown.com. So by asking people to subscribe, this is getting them to, I guess, add to your CRM. So my tip for you today is to think about how can your website grow your database? Can it be request a quote? Can it be subscribe to my newsletter? You know, let's have a little look at this one, Lockbourne Insurance. This one here, when you fill it out, name, email, not too sure why it's not, I must have it zoomed in, do I? There we are, sorry I had it zoomed in. What's your name? John. What's your email? John Smith, blah, blah, blah. What this is doing is it's adding into the CRM. It's, it's creating a workflow. It's creating the database. So my tip this week is to think about a way that you can grow your database either by having a contact form, you know, on your website, this hasn't got one, a request a quote, or the ability for people to subscribe to your updates or to subscribe to your news. All you have to do is chat to your account manager to get that added. We can give you a small quote, but start generating this database. But just be careful not to promise too much. So for example, if you say subscribe, make sure you've got a newsletter for them to subscribe to. Or So that's sometimes a little bit better to say, hey, um, express your interest or, uh, or get a quote. So that's it today. Uh, that's it for the CRM. Hopefully I made it sound a little bit sexy. It is quite detailed. It is quite techy. But you can now see that you may have this tool ready to go and you haven't been using it to its full degree. And I trust that you, uh, you look forward to the next webinar. Just to give you an understanding of the next topic. The next topic is, drum roll everyone, I believe it's the uh, email marketing. It is. So the next topic that I'm delivering is email marketing. And I'm delivering that on March the 11th at one o'clock and you can register here online. And this will talk about sending out newsletters to your customers. We covered that, that a little bit today, the power of segmenting customers into lists and getting them to self-subscribe. But then how do we actually send out a newsletter? That's what I'll be covering. So Aaron, it's the captain out officially. I'll stop the recording and uh, I'll allow for some questions if anyone's got them.